In this segment, we're going to talk about how to approach the problem of part of speech tagging. We're going to define uh, it as a sequence labeling problem, and we're going to talk about how to use basic classifiers like we've seen so far in order to do this. So the idea behind sequence labeling is that we have an input, uh, which we are going to represent as x here. Um, and we're going to think of this as a sequence of what, in our case, is going to be words x1 through xn. So previously, when we've thought about, uh, you know, when we've thought about extracting features and things like that, uh, you know, we didn't necessarily think about the words as this sequentially structured object. Now we're going to think about them in this way. And our output y is going to be the same length as the input now. So previously, we always thought about y as some kind of uh, binary or multi-class prediction, right? Some single discrete label associated with a document or sentence or whatever. Now we're going to think about it as one prediction per per word. And so this is an example of what's called structured classification. And the reason it's structured is because these y's are not somehow just like a bag of independent predictions, but they actually have this sequence associated with them where like y2 comes after y1 um, and comes, you know, a certain number of positions before yn. All right, so what we could try to do, I think, is instruct it's instructive to think about how to do this with the current tools that we've built up so far. So, uh, so let's try to predict each yi independently with logistic regression. So that's going to be something that looks like this. Now, uh, over on the left here, we have yi equals y. So we're going to use y to reflect the kind of, uh, I guess, part of speech tag or whatever that we're thinking about predicting here. Um, and we are going to need to, uh, and, and we're, we're thinking about assigning that to uh, position yi. And notice that we're conditioning on two things on the right side. We're conditioning both on the input sequence, and that was how we you know, kind of normally did it in logistic regression, and also on this index i. Um, And here's why that's going to be important. So previously, we had bag of words features. And we said, OK, you know, when we extract features like f of x, uh, uh, actually, I'm going to use the, um, the different features notation here. Um, this is because this is really where that stuff kind of comes into play here. Um, you know, if we are thinking about assigning a uh, label y to, uh, a, you know, to a, uh, an example that we're going to associate with a particular bag of words feature set. Well, the, the kind of basic bag of words features might look something like, you know, this, where you have, you know, blah, 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 where you have a one for fed, a one for raises, um, you know, and then other, uh, you know, other kind of ones in there as well. All right. So, you know, let's say we want to make this, uh, prediction here, we want to say, OK, what's the probability that, uh, you know, and we're going to think about, let's say, i equals 3. Um, so we're going to think about uh, kind of making a prediction associated with the third word. And, you know, maybe the tag we're going to think about here is nn. Then what we get remember, is this kind of block-structured thing where uh, we have this f of x vector, 
Um, and we have a bunch of different copies of it. And we're going to get the ones uh, associated with the NN tag. And then we're going to have zeros elsewhere there, and we're going to have zeros, zeros kind of everywhere else. OK, the big problem from our perspective is that this is independent of i. So this model is, go or, or rather, this set of extracted features just looks at the sentence and the part of speech tag. It doesn't look at the word that we're actually trying to tag here. And so that's kind of a problem from the perspective of tagging, right? In that we're not making use of that information. We're just going to predict like the same tag distribution everywhere. Um, and this is generally not going to work as a tagging model. Instead, what we need is a kind of positional view of our features. We need to look at x. We need to look at the fact that the label that we're thinking about is nn. And we need to think about the position. So uh, one way to do this, one very simple way, is to just have a single feature on the current word. Here, let, me, let me write the example up here. Fed raises interest rates 0.5%. So when I say a single feature on the current word, what I mean is that uh, we're going to have a vector where, uh, you know, again, we're going to have all zeros um, except in this NN segment. So zeros everywhere else. And we're just going to have a 1 associated with interest. And everything else is going to be zeros. All right, so basically what we've done is we've taken this bag, we've taken our bag of words and sort of masked it out, right? Um, we've said, okay, we're only going to look at the current word. And so this is at least a little bit better, right? In that uh, we can now say, okay, we're predicting a part of speech associated with interest. And so, uh, you know, we're at least going to get the, uh, we're at least going to have some notion of what the word we're currently looking at is and what, and what part of speech it might have. We could do better than this, though. Um, and here's what that, that's going to look like. All right, so what we have is we have our big uh, block structured feature vector where um, we've got you know the VBZ tag over here, um, and then we're going to leave ourselves plenty of room for the NN tag, and then we have all the other tags, right? Okay, and then within the NN tag, what we could do is we could say, okay. We're going to have one set of positions that correspond to the current word. And then we have one set of positions that correspond to the previous word. Um, so in this case, the indicator here would be about raises. And then we can have the next word as well. Um, and uh, this word is rates. 
So the way we can think about each position in this vector space is as a conjunction of several properties. Uh, and f we, we, we call this an indicator. And in this case, it's an indicator that the current word, you know, which is defined with respect to this position i equals 3, right? Current word equals interest. Um, and the tag equals nn here. All right, and so the, the tag information, remember, came from, uh, you know, came from kind of where we are in this big block structure thing. The current word bit came from this smaller block structure within that, and then um, interest was associated with this particular position in the vector space. So it turns out we can, we can avoid having to deal with this whole big, you know, block, kind of block feature vector idea just by saying, okay, um, we are going to treat this as a word in a bag of words space. Essentially, we think about our feature space now as talking about properties of uh, the classification instance. And in our conventional bag of words, the property was just, is this word included? Or in some cases, how many times was this word included? Now we're thinking about this sort of more complex set of properties. In this case, this position has the associated property cur word equals interest and tag equals nn. Remember, the feature function you know, depends on y in this case. Um, and so that kind of word lights up and uh, gives us a one in this whole big feature space. So we don't have to think, we don't have to actually think about kind of managing this block structure. We can again just kind of sort of throw these things in a big index and uh, access them later. Okay, so if we take uh, So we could take these indicators and feed them into a classifier. Um, and so uh, we, can tr we can basically take a labeled data set of part of speech instances, treat each position in every sentence as a example, and feed that and train on that and produce a classifier. All right, so what goes wrong? The, the kind of problem is that we're not making use of the output structure at all. So for example, we had different possibilities for raises uh, and interest rates, right? And it turns out that some of the edges that we kind of considered here are not good. Like, for example, we're not typically going to have a plural noun followed by a noun. Um, we're also not typically going to have a VBZ followed by a VP, a VBP. And so the, the predictions of a classifier may be incoherent, uh, meaning kind of locally, each prediction looks reasonable, right? But the overall structure doesn't kind of add up to be the thing that we want. And so this is going to lead us into our idea of sequence modeling. Um, and we're going to think about two models, hidden Markov models, and conditional random fields. These are going to be two things that we're going to spend some time uh, unpacking uh, throughout the next section of the class. And essentially, these are going to be two kind of contrasting ideas for uh, how to deal with this. Hidden Markov models are going to be our first example of a generative model. Um, 
and the, they're going to look a little bit different from other things we've done, but they have some attractive properties. Uh, conditional random fields are going to look a little bit more like building off of this classifier view of uh, tagging, but uh, making the output predictions coherent. That's the end of this segment.